a little bit of a hold now. We, we're going to get some yaks. Yaks to the yaks. Good morning, we're here at the San Diego Air and Space Museum in the World War I gallery. And what we're gonna talk about is this airplane right behind me, the Newport 11, French Newport 11. It was kind of like a game changer, or if you wanna say a reputation changer, because what it did is it changed the reputation of this airplane right here. This is the Fokker Eindecker, German meaning single wing. What it did have is it had the first synchronized machine gun to fire through the propeller arc without hitting the propeller. So you could aim the airplane, aim the gun. Skilled German pilots flying these things, it gave them the reputation of the Fokker Scourge. So what we had to do is to try to end the Fokker Scourge. And along comes the Newport 11. And this aircraft was sturdier, it was faster, and it was more maneuverable. One of the reasons being that it had ailerons while this airplane was still flying with wing warping. And also the, the, tail, the tail controls are more, more effective on this airplane. It didn't have a synchronized machine gun, but what it did have, it had a machine, that did, a machine gun that did fire forward over the propeller. It had a gun called a Lewis gun. The gun was mounted over the wing and a lot of the following Newports had this. They carried this with them. And the pilot had to be kind of dexterous to get this gun to come down. He had to kind of fly the airplane, if he could, a little bit straight level with his knees while he changed the canisters that were on top of the gun. Here's one of the canisters right there. He did have what was called a Bowden cord that ran from the gun to the cockpit. You can barely see it here, but it allowed him, once he got the gun down, to fire from a seated position facing forward. Now, it's kind of interesting because those canisters had either 47 rounds in them or they had 97 rounds. And if you take this machine gun, this Lewis gun, it fired at 500 to 600 rounds per minute. So you drop one of those 47 round canisters on there and you got about five seconds of ammunition. Now, these guys didn't always fire big, long bursts. Sometimes they fired a burst, killed the pilot. <laughs> that was the end of the fight. But most of the time, you know, they were probably pretty busy changing canisters if they had the small canisters. Now, the gun was pulled down on this airplane that we have right here. The gun has the old mount. They, they modified that mount. Some British guy, just some British sergeant came up with a mount called Foster, came up with a mount, a Foster mount with a, with a kind of a rail that comes down, kind of a quarter rail. You could pull the gun down like this and you could change the canisters, but also you could fire the gun up. So some people say, hey, look at this. I'm gonna fly under airplanes and shoot up. So they started flying under these airplanes, shooting the airplanes from below. And that concept stayed active into World War II. And both the Germans and the Japanese used it to some extent, but particularly the Germans, and they called it Schraga music. Now, the RL, stands for Raoul Lufberry. And Raoul Lufberry was, uh, he was French mother, American father, ended up flying in what they called the Lafayette Escadrille, which was a unit where Americans volunteered before we got into the war. They volunteered for what was called the Lafayette Flying Corps and the Lafayette Escadrille. The Flying Corps was a general thing where they were distributed among the French, French squadrons, the Escadrille was one particular squadron within that group, it was all Americans. So Lufberry flew for them and he shot down about his first 16 aircraft before he even got to the American, he, he eventually transferred to the American 
Air Service in 1918. But before he got there, he had 16 aircraft shot down. So they just said to him, he was the first American ace. To be historically accurate, uh, the Newport 11 did have a, had a big role in changing the role of the Fokker Eindecker, but also so did two British aircraft. So, you know, for history's sake, got to get things right. Now, both of these aircraft had what they are called rotary engines. What, this airplane is a particular type of airplane called a sesquiplane. Sesquiplane means one and a half wings. The bottom wing, if you'll notice, is very, very much, has quite a bit less wing area than the top. Now, the advantage of that was people could see better, and the airplane was supposedly a little bit more maneuverable. The disadvantage was you only had one fastening point here on the lower wing because there was only one big spar that ran out on this wing. There were two big spars that ran out on this wing. So you see the, the, the these two upper ones are anchored into those two spars. This one is into the bottom spar. If you look over here at the another Newport, this Newport, this has a bigger wing with two spars in the bottom and he's got this, what they call parallel. So what happens is these aircraft are a little bit structurally more sound because of the double vane, the double uh, struts. One, one last fact, this airplane was built as a flying replica and one of the owners flew it for 600 hours. What we'd like you to do is to drop down into the museum and look at it for yourself.